welcome back to this series on e-communication. Today we're going to talk about email. Email is an amazing invention. It lets us send messages to each other at the blink of an eye. It also allows us to send pictures and documents to friends around the world. And it's completely changed the way we communicate. Although the postal service works, it's often slow and in fact some computer people call normal post snail mail. Now email on the other hand is fast and efficient because the message can be sent in an instant to almost anywhere in the world. By the end of this lesson you should be able to provide a definition of email, list several advantages of using email and write and send email messages. Wow, Dawn, email sure does sound useful, but I'd like to know a bit more about it. Well, Salai, email stands for electronic mail. It's a system which allows information to be transferred from one computer to another over some sort of network. Most computer networks will have an email system. Some email systems are limited to one company and only work within the network of that company. Other email systems have gateways to the internet and this lets users send electronic mail to almost anywhere in the world. So if you want to send an email, you'll have to have a computer and an internet connection. Indeed, Salai. And you will also need an email address. This is supplied by your internet service provider and it comes with an electronic mailbox which will store your messages. But how does email actually work, Dawn? Okay. First, Someone creates an email message. An address is added to the document and it is then sent off. The information in that email now travels over a network to a mail server. This server reads the address on the email and sends it to the correct mailbox. When the recipient connects to the network and checks their email, the message will be downloaded from the mailbox onto their computer. So emails are electronic messages sent from one computer to another. Correct, Salai. But a simple text message is not all that can be sent by email. Voice messages, music files, pictures and even video can be sent via email. So you could send a picture of your baby sister to your family in the Cape. <laughs> That's right. All this can be done by attaching a file to an email message. You can attach all sorts of things like music files for your friends and word processing documents containing your work. We will learn how to attach files to emails later in this lesson. Well, email seems amazing, I must say. I'm trying to figure out how we ever survived without it. <laughs> yeah, good question. In the modern world, email has become so popular that many people think that it is the most important function of the whole internet. There really are many advantages of using email over other kinds of communication. The biggest advantage is that an email can be sent and received within seconds to almost anywhere in the world. This sure beats sending a letter through the post, which might take days or even weeks to reach the recipient. Sending an email is also better than making a phone call because the cost of making calls, especially long distance calls, is generally high. With email, you only have to pay the cost of a local telephone call to your ISP, regardless of where your messages are going. Also, you can prepare several messages offline and then when you dial up, you can send all the messages together, usually in just a few seconds. Email is also very reliable. You can usually trust that any email you send will reach its destination safely. But Dawn, what if I send it to the wrong mailbox? Well, Salai, if for some reason your message cannot be delivered, you will get a message from the ISP. You can then check the address and resend to the correct address. However, if you have made a mistake with the address and it is delivered, then you must hope that the person who received the mail incorrectly will let you know. Wow, email is vast and it's relatively cheap. I mean, certainly cheaper than making an international phone call. And the advantages continue. You can use your email to send the same message to a whole group of people at the same time. 
This is useful if you want to send an invitation to all your friends or if you want to send a holiday greeting to everyone in your family. Another good thing about email is that a copy of every email you send and receive is recorded. This means that businesses can keep a record of all their correspondence with clients and employees. These stored messages can also be printed out whenever you want. We will learn how to organize your stored mail messages later in this lesson. Are there any problems concerning emails? Well, yes, Eli. Spam, for example, is the internet version of junk mail and can slow down your computer. Viruses, as you have learned about in the series on software, are programs which can destroy information on your computer. These can be sent as email attachments. Another growing problem is ensuring privacy of your personal information. Okay, Dawn, now I know that like sending an email is pretty fast and that it is really, really reliable even though there are problems concerning it. But what I actually want to know is how do I send and write an email? Okay. Let's open up an email program and we will answer your questions as we go on. To write an email message, you start by selecting the new mail option in your software package. A blank email looks like this. On the top, there are three bars. One is marked 2, one is marked CC and the other is marked BCC. These are the address bars and this is where you insert the addresses of all the people who you want to receive the email. The two bar should contain the addresses of the people you want to send the mail to. The CC bar can be used to send a copy of your email to people even though they are not listed in the two bar. CC stands for carbon copy. Recipients will see all the names listed in the two and CC bars so they will know who else has received the message. If you don't want someone to see the names of the other recipients, put their address in the BCC bar. This will send them a secret copy of your message without details of any of the other recipients. BCC stands for Blind Carbon Copy. Got that. Good. Now, first let's look more closely at how you address an email. Email addresses are in a standard format. This is mailbox name at service provider dot extension. So my email address might be dawn at mweb.co.za. That's dawn, my name, at mweb, my service provider, dot co dot za, the extension. If you put the service provider's name and the extension together, you can call this part of the address a domain name. In this example, the domain name is mweb.co.za. Remember, there must always be an at sign between the mailbox name and the domain name. So, we could also say that every email address must be in the form of mailbox name at domain name. The extension that forms part of the domain name tells you something about the company that has registered the domain name. This is often an ISP, but commercial companies and other organizations can also register a domain name. .com is usually used when the domain name is registered in the USA. When the domain name is registered outside of the US, it ends with a country code. South Africa's country code is ZA. Then, other information in the extension tells you about the kind of company that has registered the name. CO is used for a commercial company, AC for academic institutions, GOV for government institutions, and ORG is for organizations. Now, let's get back to actually sending an email. To enter an address in one of the address bars, you can either type the address in yourself or you can use the address book. The address book is a feature of your email software program that enables you to store names and contact information like email addresses, home and work addresses, and phone and fax numbers. When you want to send an email to someone in your address book, all you have to do is open the address book and click on their name. The person's email address will automatically appear in the address bar of your email message. 
Hmm, interesting. So how do you enter new people into your address book? Well, there are two ways to enter new people or contacts into your address book. First, you can select the Add Contact option in your software, fill in the details, and then click on Save Contact. Or if someone has sent you an email and you want to add their name to your address book, you can open the email, right-click on the sender's name, and select Add to Contacts. Now, under the address bar is the subject line. This can be used to write a short description of the message so that the recipient knows what the message is about before they read it. And I guess that this large blank space is where you can type in your message. Yes, just like this. Now, do you remember we mentioned attachments earlier in this lesson? Well, if you want to send music, video or word processing files to your friends, you must attach the files to your email message. When you attach a file, the file information does not appear in the email itself. Instead, the attachment gets sent as a separate file along with the message and the original file is not changed in any way. But remember to be cautious about sending large file attachments. These large attachments could take the recipient's computer a long time to download. To attach a file to your email, click on the Insert File option in your email program. This option is sometimes represented by a paperclip icon. You will need to browse or search for the file that needs to be inserted. Once you find it, click Insert. Now, if you receive an email with an attachment, you can open the attachment by double-clicking on it. When you're finally ready to send the email, click on the Send Receive button. And how do I receive an email? Well, to receive an email, you have to connect to the network and then open your email program. Many email programs will automatically check for new emails as soon as you connect to the network. If your program is not set up this way, click on the Send and Receive button to download the new messages from your electronic mailbox to your computer. All your new messages will appear in the Inbox folder of your email program. So what happens if I receive an email that I want to reply to? Okay, all you have to do is click on the Reply button. A new email will then open up with the sender's address already entered into the To Address bar. Just remember though, any attachments that were part of the original mail will not be sent with a replied message. There's also an option to forward a message. If you get an email which might be of interest to someone else, you can send them a copy of the email by clicking on the Forward button. This will create a new mail that contains an exact copy of the original email, complete with attachments. All you have to do is add in the address of the person you want to forward the email to and hit Send Receive. Now for today's task. Write five advantages of email. Write a short explanation on how to use an address book. Type up an email and send an attachment to a friend. Thank you for joining us in this exciting lesson on e-communication. And as always, don't forget to visit our website for more information. See you next time when we investigate the rules for proper e-communication. Till then, goodbye. <laughs>